What's cracking YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. As always, it's your boy Nicholas here at Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. I'm doing this video one take, raw, uncut, unedited. Week 14, we're talking about playoffs. Talking about playoffs? I don't know, that might be playoffs for some of y'all. For some of y'all that don't dabble in, the, in those lesser, shallower leagues, most of the 12 teams or 14 team leagues, you know, they get six people into the playoffs which means they gotta start a week early, which means this is playoff week for a lot of y'all. So, this is how we're gonna do it. You know what, actually, I wanna show you how much I love you guys. This is how much I love you. I'm in here, inside, on my computer, making a YouTube video at 4 p.m. while this is going on. Just wait on it, J-W-O-I. Jesus Christ, look, four doors open. Look at it. Look how beautiful that sunset is. And I ain't even gonna watch it. So I got my priority straight, and y'all are my priority right now. We're gonna end week 14. As always, my key injuries, and what that means for the, for the week. Both offensive and defensive players. I was a big fan of doing that last week. I think that probably helps you guys out more than, uh, than I originally expected. We're gonna go into a bunch of guys I like, a bunch of guys I hate. My league recaps, and then we're gonna cut it off. So I don't wanna waste any more time because maybe if I get this video done, I can go out there and catch the sunset at the end of it. So let's play that funky music, white boy. <laughs> Boom, let's get into some injuries. So. You know, we're at the, the end of the year, week 14, week 15, where everybody's banged up. And that means these lists are getting long. And these, these breakdowns of the injuries are probably the best analysis I give on a week-to-week -week basis. And they're just kind of becoming blended with guys I love, guys I hate. Uh, first off, we'll start off with the quarterbacks. We got your boy A-Rod out in Cheese City, Mr. Cheesehead. Aaron Rodgers expected back in week 15, which means y'all need to go pick him up. So he's going to be back for your fantasy playoff. They got Carolina and then Minnesota in the fantasy playoffs. I don't really care who they're playing. It's Aaron Rodgers. He'll be back. Supposedly, there were reports that he was chucking like 50 yard passes with no problemo. That also means for y'all that dropped Jordy Nelson, I would go back and get him. He's been awful the last five weeks with Hundley at quarterback. But A Rod's back in there. You know, both them finna eat. So go pick both of them back up before it's too late. Another quarterback we got Ty Rod. Ty God. Teller 10 contusion, not practicing this week yet. Coach wants to see how well he can move around, how well he can scramble around the pocket. My guess is he's not gonna play because it's already Wednesday if he's not practicing. You know, he'll have two days to show how well he can move. Probably unlikely that he's good enough to um, to scramble around the pocket a lot. Even if, even if they think he's good enough to go, that means he's gonna have to rely heavily on his arm, which is not the reason you put his ass into your quarterback slot in fantasy football. Which means we got Nathan Peterman, or pick five pick, that's the new nickname for him, Nathan five pick Peterman. He's gonna be playing quarterback if Tyrod can't go. It's just a huge downgrade to this offense. You can't start anyone there unless his name is Shady. Government name, LaShawn. Another quarterback, Matthew Stafford. Oh, that's Matthew Stafford. Hand, uh, his hand got messed up in week 13's game. It's not broken, they say. It's badly bruised, kind of swollen. It's not significant, uh, but he's not out of the woods. He's probably gonna take like little to no reps in practice this week and let that kind of swelling go down. They'll probably ice it for like seven to nine hours a day. His hand might feel like it's completely numb by the end of the day. Leading up to the week 14 game, they play against Tampa, which sucks because it's a great matchup for him had he been playing or had he been at full strength at least. Uh, if not, Jake Rudock will be the starter, and it's a big downgrade for everybody out there in Detroit Lions LLC, Limited Liability Corporation, company, whatever that even stands for. Um, so, I mean, if he can go, yeah, I'm fine with starting the receivers there. If he can't go, it's going to be a very, very, very big downgrade too. Like I said, Jones, Golden Tate, all those, all those guys can't view anything more than like a wide receiver three. Uh, next, we got Alex Collins. We'll move over to the running backs. 
He's dealing with these migraines. Kind of came out of nowhere this report, but they did say he was practicing in full this week, so I'm not even going to get into it. He'll be a great play this week because they go again. Dude, I love how they're putting more of these AFC North matchups finally on TV. Like last week, we had the fucking WrestleMania between the Steelers and the Bengals. Them dudes got down. It was crazy. It's a fun game to watch, but now we got the Ravens and we got the Steelers. Steelers are obviously going to be without Ryan Shazier who is the number eight overall graded linebacker per PFF. So it's a big loss to that defense. He's like the defensive captain, the defensive heart of that team. So Collins should keep eating. He's been averaging a shitload of touch. I think it was 19 touches per game over the last five. Fire his ass up. Adrian Peterson dealing with a neck issue. Kept him out of last game. Non-committal on the week 14 status. Uh, he didn't practice again on Wednesday. They're just waiting for him to get clearance from the doctors. We don't know if that's gonna happen. He's only got a couple of days left to do so. Um, obviously, the less he practices, uh, the more likely it is for him to sit. Although he's, you know, he's a veteran. He, he came over from um, from the Saints and played in the next game and went off. So I don't think he really needs that much practice time in order to play. If he does sit, right? Kerwin Williams was a guy who stepped in last week. 16 carries, 97 yards. He looked very good. Only problem about getting hyped up with him is that that's all he did was carry, carry the early down work. 16 for 97, really good. DJ Foster was the only running back to even get targeted in this game. He got all five targets that were thrown to the running back. So he's a clear uh, pass catching back. And then you have Elijah Penny, who vultured Williams at the goal line. So you don't even know if Williams is going to get any of the third down work or pass catching work. You don't know if he's going to get any of the touchdowns on the goal line. So um, it's not a great start for anyone here in the Arizona backfield if Peterson does not go. They also got a really, really tough matchup against the Titans. They rank third in the NFL, allowing just 3.5 yards per carry to opposing running backs. They've let up one single run of 20 plus yards this year, none of over 40 yards, and no running back has gone over 77 yards this year on them. Not a single back has hit 77 yards for them. Uh, Ajayi hit 77 yards in week five. That was the highest total against them, and he needed 25 carries to do it. So not a good matchup for the Cardinals' backfield. I just, I'm just i staying away from this situation altogether. If Peterson plays, I think he's fine as like a low-end RB2, though, because he should get the majority of work. Next, we got Amir Abdullah. Another neck injury. What's wrong? My neck actually hurts right now. Oh, worked out this morning. This girl who's like, she's a trainer. She's my friend. She trained me. She kicked my fucking ass. Not literally, but I'm tired from our workout. It was a good one. For sure. For sure. We getting that for sure. For sure. Amir Abdullah, where you at? I like how there's no roommates home so I could just scream shit like that. Uh, Amir Abdullah didn't play in week 13. It was kind of a surprise. Not a surprise inactive, but we didn't know he was injured. Which left like Theo Riddick there as like the lead back, I guess you could say. He had 10 touches, uh, 62 yards, got into the end zone. If Abdul is out again, you know, Riddick is like a clear RB2 just because they trust him the most on, especially on pass catching uh, downs, and he's going to get a, a handful of carries. So I think just based on his floor, you can put Riddick in as an RB2. They play against the Bucks, which is a really good matchup for running backs. Last week, we had some guy named Tion, like a like bad ting, bad Tion Green, uh, undrafted free agent out of the University of Cincinnati. Only 23 years old. 23 years old, ran for 51 yards on 11 carries and a touchdown. So that was not a, not a name anyone expected prior to uh, the game to show up in the box score like that. But he did. Take a look at his measurables. They are miserable, miserable, measurables. Say that shit 28 times fast. I bet you can't, but you probably could do it actually. Miserable, measurables. Okay, I'm done. Um, so if you look to the right of the screen, you see all of his measurables. 484 speed for a running back. Third percentile spark score. And that doesn't mean he's in the top three. That means he's literally in the bottom three. So I think it's clear when you're doing something wrong when you're comparable is Rob Kelly. Rob, Fat Robert Kelly. So, you know, I just wouldn't expect a dominant performance from Tion Green in Green Bay. Probably just maybe more snaps down the stretch for him because he performed well. Uh, I actually do like Amir Abdullah if he does play this week as like a low RB2 because the matchup is so good and... You know, he's proven game in and game out that he's, the volume is there. It's not going anywhere, right? He's good for, for 10 to 15 touches a game. Good matchup. I like that. The Bucks have been very, very bad against the run, as I've said. Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones ran all over them last week. You had Tevin Goldman go for about 100 yards and two touchdowns the week before. So they're definitely a defense to exploit. If, if Abdul is out, fire Riddick up. If Abdul is in, I don't hate him as, as, a, as a, an RB2 or flex play. Mark Ingram, limited on Monday, downgraded, sat out on Tuesday and Wednesday. Very questionable because they play on Thursday night. 
against Atlanta. So it's definitely scary if you're a Mark Ingram owner and you need to, you know, take a dub this week to get into the playoffs. Um, if Ingram can't go, Kamara is probably like the RB1 in fantasy this week. If he does play, I still want Ingram in my life. Unless they say they're going to limit his snaps or he's severely limited. Could just be giving him rest. Um, but if he, if he does play, as long as they're not like saying he's severely limited, I want him in my lineup. Because if you look at the last three games against Atlanta, Ingram dominates those matchups. He's averaged over 20 half point PPR fantasy points per game over the last three matchups. So this is a, this is a matchup I want Ingram in, even if he's at 80% or something like that. So fire him up. Mark Cooper, missed week 13, still in the concussion protocol, did not practice on Wednesday. Uh, right, still in the protocol along with dealing with this ankle injury with someone said he is still nursing. So he's truly questionable for week 14, which sucks considering um, that they're going against the Chiefs, right? This is a great matchup for the Raiders pass catchers. He's got torched by my man Spaghetti Anderson and Jermaine Curse of the Jets. They are allowing the second most fantasy points to the wide receiver position on the season. And don't forget, Amari Cooper did have a big game this year. You remember that 11 catch, 210, two tutty performance? Guess who that came against? That was the Chiefs. I don't think I needed to remind you that, but they're going against the Chiefs. Would have been a great matchup for Cooper. Crabtree will be back from, you know, he's back from his, his chain snatching suspension, which means he is a top 10 option this week. If Cooper can't go, it's even more volume. He's going to go his way in a great matchup. Oh, Marcus Peters is also suspended by the team for throwing, a, throwing that fucking flag into the stands like it was a grenade. So he'll be out for a week. This week, it's just good good news for the, the pass offense of the Raiders and good news for Crabtree. Uh, other wide receivers. God damn, this list ain't never going to end. It ain't ever getting closer. Kelvin Benjamin, torn meniscus, listed as day-to-day. -day, practice for the first time today on Wednesday. It's a great matchup versus Indianapolis, right? They've lost like every cornerback that they've had that was somewhat productive this year. So they're getting trampled on in terms of the passing game. Tyrod is probably going to be out, as I mentioned, though. So it's a big downgrade for this offense. Coming off the injury and possibly with Nathan Peterman at quarterback, it's like you can't be comfortable with Kelvin Benjamin in your lineup. So take that for what it is worth. I really need a drink of water. Yes, let's fucking go. Um, uh, Robert Woods is out again, which leaves Cooper Cup and it leaves Sammy Watkins as the one and two there. Just like last week, I'm fine firing them both up as wide receiver two slash threes. Uh, who are they even playing against right now? Oh, the Eagles. Okay, so the Eagles aren't like a ferocious pasty that you can't throw the ball against. I'm fine. There should be a shootout there, honestly, in, uh, in LA. So uh, I'm cool starting both of them as long as Robert Woods is out. We have Shard Matthews day to day. He finally got back to practice on Wednesday because of a ham in I was going to say injury or issue. I don't know how I can combine the word hamstring injury issue. That's what the fuck he's dealing with. Um, they play Arizona, and I'm not really sure who Patrick Peterson is going to shadow, if anyone, if uh, Shard does play, because obviously you have Shard and you have Corey Davis. It's been clear that Rashard Matthews is, at least this season, the best wide receiver on the Titans roster. He's proven it throughout the year. He's been Mariota's like reliant target on the outside, obviously besides Lanny Walker, who runs routes on the inside. So, you know, this is, I'll be the first to admit, I, I've been bullish on my boy Corey Davis for the last few weeks. Hasn't shown up, man. He's played horribly. I don't know what he is doing, but if Rashard Matthews is playing, he is the preferred option in fantasy. I still don't love either of them that much. It is a passing defense to take advantage of, but it's hard to trust him at possibly less than 100%. It's also hard to trust um, Corey Davis because he just has been terrible the last few weeks. So I would say Matthews is probably a wide receiver three. Davis is more of a, a low wide receiver three flex play, if that. Uh, Greg Olson practicing in full. He will not be limited at all as per their head coach, Mr. Ronald Rivera. I wonder if his name is Ronald. I feel like Ronald is not a Spanish name. Like, you don't name your kid Ronald, right? Maybe it is Ron, Ronald. Ronald Rivera, anyway, said he's going to be fully going. He missed last week because um, they thought that the artificial turf on the field might be an issue for his foot. 
Anyways, um, what I will say about Greg Olson is, I, I, and I'll touch on this more a little bit, it's a really tough matchup against Minnesota. They've been good against the tight end, but they've also been really good against wide receivers. They've been really good against running backs. Um, here's what I'll say. Funchess is less than 100%. Xavier Rhodes is going to cover him as long as he plays. So you could almost take Funchess out of the picture. Then you have um, Christian McCaffrey, right? He's like the only other weapon that Newton consistently leans on. Minnesota has given up the single fewest fantasy points to the running back position on the season. They are allowing just 35 receiving yards per game to opposing running backs, and they've allowed just one single receiving touchdown from running backs on the season. So you take away Devin Funches, I don't, which I don't think will be too hard for Rhodes, given that he's less than 100%, and then you zone in on Christian McCaffrey, which I think will leave Greg Olson open for a decent amount of work as long as they're saying he's not limited. So. Look for Greg Olson to have a sneaky good uh, start this week. Jordan Reed, he's out again. Well, he's not practicing. He ain't going to be back this year, I don't think. Either way, Vernon Davis has been very terrible the last couple weeks. So at this point, he's not a reliable option related to stream when there's other good guys on the waiver wire, which leads me to these next two tight end injuries slash openings for other tight ends. First, we have Zach Ertz. Uh, concussion, still in the concussion protocol. He suffered it late in the third quarter of Sunday Night Football. Trey Burton, the backup, is a very, very, very good option as a streaming tight end this week. He's super athletic and he can do almost all of what Zach Ertz can do in terms of give you fantasy production. Uh, he filled in in week nine versus Denver, went for 41 yards and a touchdown. Now the tight end slot in Philly, right? The tight end position is seeing 28% of Wentz's targets so far in 2017. I don't really care that it's a tough matchup against the Rams. Like I said, it should be a shootout. There goes my, Every time I film these, my mom calls me during it, I swear. She's so worried about me. I, I gotta call her more, I feel like an asshole. Um, should be a shootout, LA versus Philly. And uh, I just like Burton's, you know, Burton's proved it throughout the last, you know, the last, the, whatever experience he has in the NFL, he's proved that when he has the opportunity, he could do big things with it. And I think he's, uh, in a prime time slot to step up and do just that as the top 10 option as long as Ertz is out. Also out with a concussion, CJ Fedorowicz of the Houston Texans. He's headed to the IR actually with this concussion. I normally wouldn't care uh, about this, right? I wouldn't really touch on it, but this leaves the tight end position open in Houston for a guy named Steven Anderson. He stepped in last week when Fedorowicz went out, caught five balls for 79 yards and a touchdown, which puts him basically right into the, the streaming radar. Anderson's just 24 years old, good athlete, very good measurables. If you look on the screen now, he's a little undersized, but so are guys like Jordan Reed who have success, you know, running that in, in line slot uh, kind of seam tight end position, 6'2", 230. But if you look at his measurables on the right side, he's very, very, very um, high up in terms of the 40, burst score, agility score, catch radius for the tight end position. It's not the first time he's had a big game um, this season, right? He went two for 63 against KC, four for 44 against Indy while being, you know, the tight end two here. So both of those matchups were at home in those big matchups. Week 14, they get a home matchup against the Niners. It's a very, very, very good spot for Anderson here. It's a good streaming option for you guys that are desperate, maybe you Gronk owners, things like that. Prior to week 13, last week they didn't let one up, but prior to week 13, the Diners had let up a receiving touchdown to the tight end position in six straight games. So, in my opinion, Anderson is a top 10 option this week at tight end. Defensive player injuries. We have Jimmy Smith, the cornerback of the Ravens, their cornerback one, towards Achilles, plus he's kind of suspended. He appealed the suspension, but as soon as he got hurt, he was like, fuck it, I'm gonna take my suspension while I'm hurt, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's a huge, huge hit to one of the top rated pass defenses. This Ravens defense was very, very, very good against the pass. Per Pro Football Focus, Jimmy Smith had not allowed a touchdown in coverage in 2017. So um, first round rookie Marlon Humphrey will be pressed right into a full-time role opposite Brandon Carr. Both are good, neither are anywhere near Jimmy Smith's caliber. So downgrade for the Ravens pass D. Uh, Damata Pico and Derek Wolf, the Broncos D lineman. Pico missed last week. I'm not sure if he's going to play or not. I believe he's questionable for this week. Uh, Wolf injured his neck and he's probably going to be placed on the IR. Both guys have graded out as top 30 run defenders, interior run defenders per PFF. 
Uh, as I said last week, with Pico being out, it would have opened up a lot of lanes for Kenyon Drake. That's exactly what it did. He ran all over this Denver defense. Same thing will happen again if Pico is out, Wolf is out. It'll open up a lot of rain, a lot of lanes for Matt Forte and Bilal Powell in Week 14. I, uh, I actually really, really, really like Matt Forte, who's probably available in a lot of your leagues. So I would go grab Forte if you're desperate for a flex player or a running back spot. Next up, Falcons. Desmond Trufant, Brian Poole, who were both out last week, let Case Keenum throw for like 230 yards and two tutties on this Falcons D. Both of them are expected to be back um, this year, uh, this week against the Saints. So it's a, I mean, it's not a downgrade for Breeze, but it's going to be a tougher matchup for them. Tredavious White and Shaq Lawson. Uh, Tredavious White took that people's elbow from Gronk on the sidelines. That was some bullshit. He should be suspended for more games, to be honest with you. But uh, Tredavious White is probably going to be out. He's in the concussion protocol. Shaq Lawson rolled his ankle. He's definitely out for a couple of weeks. Shaq Lawson, is uh, he's been pretty good as a run defender this year. So it's just an upgrade all around for that Colts offense. Uh, it's an upgrade to Frank Gore. If Tredavious White is out, it's definitely an upgrade to T.Y. Hilton, who is already in a good matchup because the Bill's pasty has not been great. Let me check if they actually have anything on uh, Tredavious White on Roto World so I can give you a definitive answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody, talk to me and you. Nah, it just says he's in the concussion protocol. They said he should be at, uh, about 50-50 for this week's game. So keep an eye on that if you're looking to throw T.Y. Hilton in your lineup. Logan Ryan, the cornerback for the Titans, suffered a concussion. It's basically been their number one cornerback all year, their best cornerback. It will be an upgrade to Blaine Gabbert and especially Larry Fitzgerald. He, Logan Ryan's been shifting from slot to the outside, defending you know uh, wide receivers all over the place, but he's run 75% of his routes from the slot, which is where Fitzgerald runs the majority of his routes. So if Logan Ryan is out, it is definitely a big upgrade to Fitz, and I would make sure he's in your lineup. Um, what else do we got? Yeah, so... This little plug here. As always, if you're not signed up for my newsletter, my newsletter basically consists of my blog posts, my top waiver wire pickups, um, the breakdowns of the murky running back backfields in the NFL, and my wide receiver versus cornerback notable matchups for the week. That's uh, that, That'll come out in an email. If you're not signed up, make sure you head over to my site. I will link it right here in the description, or I'll link it here as well as in the description. You can go sign up right on the homepage. Just scroll down, put your info in, and every Tuesday, Thursday, you'll get an email when this video and when my blog posts come out. Now we move into some guys I love this week. It's actually the same two quarterbacks, I think, that were on here last week. We got Phillip Rivers going against Washington. It's a great matchup at home. Rivers has thrown for at least 330 yards and or multiple passing touchdowns in every game at home this year, except for one, which was all the way back in week three. So he's been very, very, very good at, at home. Rivers, no pun intended, because he's from LA, is on fire right now, averaging 316. Sorry, that was a really rude joke I just made. So I apologize if any of y'all are in LA. I kind of want to get footage of the fires going on. It's not that close to me. I'm down in like the San Diego area. I think it's like an hour or two north. But some of the stuff I've been seeing is really crazy. So be safe out there. And I apologize for that joke if any of y'all live up there. But, but, but the show must go on. Rivers on fire. He's really good right now. Averaging 316 passing yards over his last four games with eight touchdowns in that span. In that four-week span, he is fantasy's quarterback number five. Told you the boy is hot right now. If you take... Out. Anyone named Dak Prescott or Eli Manning since week four, in terms of opponents that the Skins have played, <coughs> they've given up on average 300 passing yards and 2.3 passing touchdowns per game. So he's not named Eli, he's not named Dak Prescott. That means he's probably going to put up some pretty good numbers. Just an all around good, good thing we got going on here for Phillip Rivers. Next up, Jameis Winston. Again, he was on my list last week. Really liked him. Uh, went 270 and two in his first game back from a shoulder injury. So you could definitely do worse than that. It was actually QB five last week. So top five quarterback first week back for Winston. This Detroit defense is banged up a little bit. They haven't been getting much pressure on the quarterbacks. Winston is another week healthier. The Lions over the last five games are allowing about 280 yards of offense to the opposing quarterback. 
That includes guys like Brent Hundley, Deshaun Kaiser, Mitch Trubisky, Case Keenum, and Joe Flacco. So 280 yards of offense to those guys. I'm sure Winston can surpass that. They gave up 270 yards or more and two touchdowns to both Case Keenum and Flacco, which is the last two quarterbacks they played. Look for James Winston to match those numbers. If not, they've also allowed like three rushing scores over the last four or five games. So Winston wants to turn on the burners. You know, maybe they want him to throw less or run more. Who knows? Really like Winston. Um, wide receivers, again, always, I will have my notable wide receiver cornerback matchup sheet up tomorrow morning. So make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter on my website if you want that emailed out to you. Uh, Deion Lewis and Rex Burkhead, again, man, they were the two running backs on my love list last week. Really love this combo. Again, they both went off last week. Um, not off, I guess, for Deion Lewis, but 12 carries, I think it was, 95 yards. It's, uh, the week before that, he was at like 15 carries, 115 yards, something like that. Burkhead's catching the ball. He's running the ball. He's scoring the ball. He's doing everything. Both of these guys are just getting the majority of work in this backfield and obviously it's a very valuable position in fantasy. They're going against Miami. Not a good defense, so... Fire both these guys up, Rex, uh, Rex Burkhead, I was about to say Rex Lewis and Deion Burkhead, baby. What other running back, backs I like? Uh, Samaje P. Ryan for sure. Sort of a rough game last week, but I assume he's going to bounce back in week 14 against a really, really bad Chargers run defense who've let up like, I think the fifth most fantasy points to the running back position on the year. I look for uh, P. Ryan to capitalize and it should be a pretty good game there. Washington and the Chargers, a lot of scoring. Alex Collins, I touched on him in the kind of like the injury uh, wrap up thing. I just really like him in this AFC South matchup without um, Ryan Shazier. Collins is getting a ton of touches. Definitely get him back in your lineup as like a low end RB1. Matt Forte also touched on this. These are all guys I've touched on basically in the injury thing. That's why I'm saying they're kind of intertwined, right? When one guy gets injured, another guy steps up, thus becoming a guy I love. Matt Forte getting a bunch of touches still. Um, had a season high, I think 15. This is all in my waiver wire sheet as well, so you can go check that on the website. But Broncos have been getting washed by the run lately, probably without Pico, probably without, well, definitely without Derek Wolf. Uh, so Matt Forte is a good bet for 15 touches against a bad run defense. So fire him up. Trey Burton, Steven Anderson are the two tight ends I really like this week, and both are definitely available in a lot of your leagues, I'm sure. So I would get either of those guys into my lineup. Guys, I dislike this week. Cam Newton. Going against Minnesota, they have allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. They've given up a combined 31.8 fantasy points to the last three quarterbacks that have played against them. That's like 10 fantasy points a game for these quarterbacks. Um, as I mentioned with Olsen before, right? I talked about how their top weapon on the outside, Devin Funches, is probably going to be taken out of the game. He's going to be less than 100%, shattered by Xavier Rhodes. Then that leaves basically Christian McCaffrey to lean on. And as I also said, Minnesota is very, very stiff against running backs. They're very, very stiff against pass catching running backs. So that leaves basically just Greg Olson. I don't see Newton having a lot of success through the air in this game. The only way he could, I, I think he proves me wrong is if he busts off a couple lucky big runs, maybe one or two big runs, gets in the end zone that way. But otherwise I, I am staying away from Cam this week. Um, and along with Cam Newton, I would say Christian McCaffrey. I, I think he goes for 60 total yards and, and, and doesn't score a touchdown. Mark that down. Come, you can come for blood. Come for my blood if I'm wrong on that. On my mama. I'm kidding. Don't put that on my mama. I also don't love Kenyon Drake. Even though he's coming off this big week right against the Broncos, he ran all over them. Playing against New England. Who? They played against two weeks ago. Was it? Yeah, just two weeks ago. Held him to 20 rushing yards on nine carries. They have not allowed an opposing running back to score a touchdown or surpass or surpass or surpass 11 and a half fantasy points since week eight. That's half point PPR. Um, I, I really don't know how Uncle Bill does it, man. I don't understand how he does it. They've allowed only five rushing touchdowns on the year. Every year, you're always like, oh, they're not that good. And then like halfway through the year, a flip switches and they're just, they become the goat, man. Ah, Bill, Bill, you, you, Bill's a crazy, Bill's crazy, man. I wish Bill was my uncle. That'd be sick. Imagine going to your Christmas, like your family Christmas party and, and, uh, and Bill Belichick was your uncle. That'd be wild, man. That'd be wild. Um, 
Who else do we got? A couple. Dude, honestly, I was looking through the tight ends, and there's not a lot of tight ends I don't like this week. I actually literally I can't find any that I don't like. I don't love uh, Vernon Davis. He hasn't been that good as of late. Honestly, I love all the tight ends, man. Start all your tight ends. Start them all. Start a tight end in your quarterback slot if you can, bro. Don't do that. Because y'all, someone will do it and be like, you cost me the playoffs. I'll be like, honestly, you shouldn't even be allowed to use a computer if you did that. Um, yeah, and that's going to wrap it up. Basically, for injuries, guys I like, guys I hate. And, uh, oh, we'll go through my league recaps. All right, so we have the E-Town Get Down, the one that you guys have watched a live draft for. I'm out of the playoffs in that one. I could not overcome... Um, I could not overcome all the injuries I sustained this year. It's another disappointing year for me, man. It sucks. Next, actually, the next year we were talking about is the 10th year anniversary of the E-Town Get Down. So we might have some big things in store. We might be going to Vegas for the draft. But stay tuned. Obviously, y'all will see the entire vlog of that shit. Um, what's my second league? I'm in, oh, I'm in the league with my friends from college. I have the most point. I'm in. I finally. It took me forever to sneak into the playoff spot. I'm in fourth place right now. The, the fifth place guy has 400 points less than I do. I have by far the most points in that league, and I'm only in fourth place. So there's three guys with the same record as me. I need to win this week to get into the playoffs, which is crazy. Just to, I'm seven and six with by far the most points in that league, which is you know just madness. So um, yeah. So if I win this week, I'm in. If I lose this week, I, that's going to piss me off so bad. But anyway, I'm in right now. That's that. Uh, Fantasy Jocks, Office League. Um, I have the second most points in that league. And I'm It's a. I'm one spot out. So, right? This is another thing. I'm one spot out of the playoffs. I'm in, se I'm in seventh place. I, I need to be in sixth place to, uh, to get into the playoffs. I'm one spot out of the out of the playoff spot in that league, and I have the second most points in the league. So it's you know just some things you just, you just, you just can't. It's not your fault, man. It ain't your fault. That's what I tell myself to sleep at night, at least. Um, so that's three leagues. My subscriber league. I missed the playoffs, man. It's kind of embarrassing. If <laughs> um, My subscriber league, yeah, so I finished six and seven. The last playoff spot was seven and six, so I missed that by a game. And I still credit that to week one, I had Odell Beckham Jr. in my flex spot. He didn't play in week one. Um, and that cost me. <laughs> and, uh, and I lost by .3 points that game. So had I won that, I would be seven and six instead of six and seven. <sighs> But that's 100% my fault. I should stop complaining about that. I should stop complaining about having to do these videos. Because I did that so quickly, it looks like I can still catch the sunset. And, guys, if you enjoy the video, please give it that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We will be breaking it down next week, week 15. We will be breaking it down week 16 for your championship matchups. And I hope you all get into the playoffs. I hope you all dominate the playoffs. Um... Go follow me on Twitter, which has been down here the entire time. Go sign up to the newsletter. Again, thumbs up, please, if you enjoyed or if it helped you. Drop any questions you have for me down below, or you can tweet at me, whatever you want to do. And I'll try to get back to you as best as I can. My vlog comes out on Saturday, every Saturday morning. If you enjoy watching that, thank you very much. And Sunday, we'll be back. I, I missed the live stream last Sunday because I was on a train from LA down to San Diego during that time. So I didn't have like Wi-Fi connection or whatever to do the YouTube stream. That's that. I'm about to plug your ass into the computer and upload it. I don't really have to do any editing because I did this, like I said. One take, raw, gifted, unforgivable. Peace.